Good morning and welcome to our worship today, this second Sunday of Easter, where our gospel reading is from John chapter 20 and records the account of Jesus appearing to his disciple Thomas. The question to begin with, why do we do the things that we do? Or why do people do that which they are driven to do? To climb a mountain or swim the channel? Jump out of an aeroplane or write a novel? Perhaps explore a cave or run a marathon? Knit a jumper or go to the theatre? Or perhaps it's because we are a purpose-driven people. Purpose being to prove to ourselves or others that we have done something, that we've notched up an achievement, to be able to say, I did that. Sometimes we do it so that we can leave a mark, prove a point, make a difference, change a life, change our life. Are we ever so bold as to testify that the purpose of what we do achieve is really for the benefit of others, those whom we know and those who we will never know? John's Gospel is a bold gospel, full of signs and wonders. He records for us water being changed into wine. 5,000 people being fed with a little boy's lunch. Jesus meeting a Samaritan woman at the well in the height of the day and asking her for a drink of water. And Jesus washing his disciples' feet. It's also the gospel that contains the many I am sayings of Jesus. I am the bread of life, the light of the world, the true vine, the way, the truth and the life. The good shepherd, eight, with you always. Like Luke, John's Gospel is one that is written with a self-declared purpose. Luke states this in his opening paragraph. His purpose is to give Theophilus an orderly account of the things that have been happening among them, so that Theophilus may have certainty of all that he has been taught about Jesus Christ. In contrast, John's aim is stated in the closing chapters that he wrote. To the reader so that they may have may believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God and that by believing have life in his name. But John is also a book with a mission that confession of the author. In the 20 chapters 21 including the probably later added final one are the signs carefully selected by John needed for belief in Christ and life in his name. Having life in Jesus' name runs throughout John's Gospel. The opening verses of John's Gospel know so well to us there's a danger that they slip off of our tongue. It states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning through seeing him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Through Christ, John tells us, all things were made. In him was life, the light of all mankind, and John is in no doubt about that. John records for us the words of Jesus. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Chapter 10, verse 10, and it's the same promise that Jesus made when he met that Samaritan woman at the well. The water I give them will become a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. Stated again in the Gospel summary of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Thomas, a disciple, if we had his words, would have been able to tell us so much of what he had seen and witnessed, so much of what his life with Christ had involved, so much that he had been party to, and perhaps crucially, 
so much of what John has left out. But alas, Thomas will be forever known as Doubting Thomas because of the account that we have just heard read today. Seven days after Jesus's resurrection, after the rest of the disciples had seen Jesus alive. But rather than being brave, eager, courageous Thomas, he is forever known as Doubting Thomas. But there's more to Thomas than his doubting. He was a disciple who, disciple who was eager to go to Lazarus's tomb after Jesus had delayed visiting his sick friend until he had died. John chapter 11 verse 16. Thomas was also the voice of the disciples at the Passover. And Jesus seeks to comfort them by assuring them that he is going ahead to prepare a place for them. And when he has done so, he will come back and take them to be with him. Lord, Thomas says, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Here is a question in for you, Thomas. You need a certainty, clarity. And in response, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. But over and above all, it is a Thomas who gave up all he had to follow Jesus, the Messiah. In following Jesus, the Messiah, the dedication was complete when he did as he was bathed by the risen Jesus and touched his hands and his side. And maybe Thomas was the very first one to touch those wounds of Jesus following his resurrection. The wounds that had descended to the lowest depths of hell and would be raised to the height of glory at his right hand as his father in heaven. As he touches Jesus' side and hand, Thomas has his own epiphany and declares, My Lord and my God. If all that he had seen and witnessed up to this point were not enough. Here Jesus proved, provides for Thomas what he has been searching for for the last seven days at least. In his unbelief of the testimony of the other disciples. There is a connection between Jesus' words of affirmation and prophecy to Thomas. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believe. In the words of John, that probably twice concludes his gospel. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you may have life in his name. And Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. So this leaves us with a fairly obvious question. A question that will not be answered this side of heaven. What else did Jesus do? What else did Thomas and the others see and witness? What didn't John record? If you were to write your testimony, record your life with Christ, be it in 21 chapters or 21 words, what would you include? Or perhaps what would you exclude to ensure, as John did, that you record all that was needed for others to believe in Christ and to have life in his name? They may know that Jesus is the Messiah son of God. Would you and I be willing to include the honest times of doubting our faith, doubting God, doubting the existence of God? Because maybe it is in those times of doubt that we most closely acknowledge the Thomas within us. It is that doubt that propels us forward to a fresh epiphany when we declare with certainty, as Thomas did, my Lord and my God. Amen. Let us pray together. And Father, as your people here, we ask that you will meet us this day. 
Lord, meet us in our unbelief so that we may meet you afresh and declare your praise so that others may have life in your name. Amen. <laughs>